Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to RVing in New England. My name is John DiPietro, and if it's Wednesday night, it means it's time for RVing in New England. As you can see, I have totally taken over the show, and periodically we will let Bob Zagami stop in and say hello, everybody. So, Bob, stop in for a second. Say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. It's 80 degrees in Naples today. Bob, we have a um, large... <laughs> audience based in New England, and that's probably not a good way to make friends and influence people. I, I used to be in New England for 77 years. I mean, now now it's, now it's I get the warm weather. Yep. Well, you got Walter Swenson, who's down there, getting, getting chilly in Central Florida. It is. I, actually, my wife just told me that we're going to be in the 30s this weekend. So Right. Well, they, we might be getting 30, 30 inches of snow on Old Cape Cod. But you know what? Weather is what we always talk about RVing because when it's great weather, we talk about getting out in the RV. When it's bad weather, we talk about getting out in the RV. But all year, we talk about staying safe in our RV. And our guest tonight is going to be a perfect example of why you should listen to the show so that you can stay safe in your RV. Bob, you want to tell us? Yes, that's who right. Our guest you, is? We, you know, John, I searched the entire world to find somebody that understood propane. Because most, most RVers but did don't you say, understand it. Did you say world. cocaine? No, propane. Oh, propane. propane. It's okay. a gas, not a powder. Okay. Yeah, so we have that. But I, but I found him. Mike Bray from Diversified Power Solutions in Florida. We're going to bring him on in a little bit. He's going to tell us everything we need to know about propane, but more importantly, about the products that are going to help you stay safe on the road and at home with your barbecue. It's it's an exciting time. In fact, I ran into Mike and some of the principals of his company at the Tampa show this week. They had a great display. And it's it's an exciting time in the RV industry. We've got the show season going. we got Boston under our belt. we got Tampa under our belt. This weekend, they got a lot of our dealers are down in Hartford. Uh, you know, it's just a fun time. Oh, right that's now. right. This is the Hartford show. I feel so bad for our friend Joe because it sounds like they're going to get nailed. It, it, on it does sound like it. Uh, yep. We do have campers in Country Camper, which is soon to be RV1 in New England. They have sold to RV retailer. Right. Are you sure you can say that yet? What's that? You sure you can say that? I can say it. Yeah, okay. they're, they're well, said it. They, just, they just haven't closed on it. They're going to close on it in uh, February. Either, either uh, way, you said it. Right. I said it. It's out there. Fuller RV, uh, Hemlock Hill with their Cougars. I, I don't know if Kevin's joining us tonight, but uh, I'm sure Kevin will probably be down there. Lee's Auto and RV Ranch, uh, good friend Frank Roberts and Longview RV and Todd Emerson. They'll be there. And New England RV Roof with Jim Convoy Jim. will yeah. be there. So That's a great lineup. Great, That's line. a great lineup. You the know what we should no, say, but but John, but what the only thing missing is me and you. Now you might take a trip down, but I'm I'm not on the seminar program. Well, I was going to take a trip down in the seminar program. Take a couple of my grandkids down with me, but we'd have to leave. Now I'm supposed to start Friday afternoon and go all day Saturday. Again, you know it's one of those storms that they say if it tracks a little bit to the east, we're okay. But um, you know, poor Joe. Th- they missed the show last year, right? Uh, no, he did. Yeah, he missed the show last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and there are a couple of years where he missed, I think he missed it in twenty twenty too. We we were lucky. We got in under the gun. Yep. yep. And I think and he got canceled. Well, look at crazy it. thing is that poor guy. Why don't Why don't we bring Mike Ray into the studio? He's waiting patiently in Clearwater, Florida. Welcome to our being in New England, Mike. Hey, guys, thanks so much for uh, letting me join and jump into the ring with you guys. Jump well, into yeah, the that, ring. That's a good way to paraphrase it, jump into the ring. Mike, <laughs> remember one thing. What's that? We may appear friendly to each other, but off campus, we don't – off campus, off camera, we don't say a word to each other. I doubt <laughs> that seriously, but okay, we'll run with that one. But, but you know, the funny thing in 
in the media world, there are people, and I know of several of them, that on camera they are happy as, as a couple together when the light is on, when the on-air light is on. And even when they take breaks, they can't stand each other. But then the light comes back. Hi, everybody. We're having a great time here. Bob and I, we have fun whether the camera's on or off. That's right. And um, you know what? I don't doubt that. Before we get into Mike's topics, Bob, you know, Mike, we always have great guests. And we have a different guest every week. And what are we into? Our sixth, our sixth year of this show. This year. But this the show. But without our audience, who are our number one guests, we really don't have a show. So, Bob, let's let's say hello to them. Walter, Walter Swenson. Walter, Walter, Walter jumped on really quick. Uh, he yeah. was early. Yeah. Walter's our, Walter's our resident still... engineer. Walter's going to appreciate the uh, design and the engineering yes. of the products. Yep. Yep. Uh, I guarantee you, Mike, we'll get a comment from Walter. Gail's yeah, on he's sharing the... our weather. This is great. Yeah. Gail's on from Rhode Island. She's the, her and her husband, Steve, are the Rhode Island State Directors for Good Sam. And what's she saying here? Many of, are you in Florida too, Gail? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's All right. right. I'm in Naples. Tell yeah. me, tell me, we, we could have a little meetup. We got Walter. We got you know Gail and Steve. I know. Yeah. I know. Rum. What do you? Want? When I lead in like that about Gail, you don't listen to me. No, I knew she was in Florida. You, you just right off on your own tangent. Well, you know what? You know why I do that, John? They would rather listen to me than you. Bob, you, you are absolutely right. They would rather listen to you and watch me. Because you're the better looking one. Better looking. I, mean, right. I know Ryan. Ryan's not in Florida. He's too, he's too busy with his mobile repair service. Ryan, well, I gave him two referrals this week. Well, okay, but Ryan, you should... Mike, can independent reps sell your products? Because this is the best independent rep, mobile service rep in New England. He could sell one on every call. Absolutely. We'd love the chat. With folks. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll get you in touch with him. Uh, good evening, Chef Boy IDs and Mr. Daniels. See, he, he knows he knows where the priorities are. See, I spend money on my indulgence. John buys Chef Boy ID in the in the supermarket for 10 for a dollar. No, 12 for a dollar. In case, Bob, you can sit in your easy chair on Saturday and watch Boston. I intend to do that, Frank. I intend to watch you all get snowed on. And Marie, good evening, gentlemen. Gen she must be referring to you and my you and another you and Florida. Florida. Yes, another she Floridian. Okay, watching from the Panhandle. Now, Greg's back on, to us. The intro should be Bob and John. See, wait. see, there's one on my side. Wait, hold on a second. Greg works with Ryan. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I got I got complimentary tickets to the Boston show for Greg. Not you. I got him. And yet he says the show should be Bob and John. Greg, next year at the that, beat, at the show, who calls the guy? That was Bob's show, and you're the second act. Jerry Plant from Majors RV in Cape Cod. Jerry, if you do not put gas stop on your shelves, if you don't have that in your store, will you see what this does? You, you guys ought to sell out of them down there. Michael DePietro, let's see. Who's Michael DePietro? Bob. No idea. Go and fill in for John. <laughs> you'd, be better, you'd be better looking, Mike. That, that'd that be true. Mark Polk. Do you know Mark Polk, Mike? RV Education 101? Uh, we've gone back and forth. We've actually had a number of communications. You should send him some Hi, Mark. He is one of the nice guys in this industry. After John and I. But he's one of the nice guys. And even his wife is joining us tonight. Now, Lovely. Oh, that's now, right. Come on, there. That's you right. You can't Look take it. her to Clearwater, Mike. There are separate TVs, though. She's she's a vegan, vegan, vegan. So if we intend to go to a steakhouse or something red, we'd have to go with Mark, and we'd have to leave Don home. Okay, Walter wants to get serious. Our fiber has a large furnace and twelve-gallon water heater. Would gas stop detect both of these appliances running as a leak? We get whistling when they are both running in the regulator. Great question. Um, one don't, thing don't, that don't, gas... Mike, don't build up his ego. Horrible question. All right. Um, no, no <laughs> seriously. Gas stop is really set so it doesn't interfere with your normal operations. It really doesn't trigger and shut down the flow of propane. 
until you reach a flow of at least 70 standard cubic feet per hour, which is roughly equivalent, 80 to 100,000 BTUs of demand. So I would not see what he's looking at um, there as reaching that kind of demand level. So it would not see it as a leak. So only when you're hitting really above that 80 to 100,000 BTUs of pull, would that thing trigger? So the answer would be no. Okay. Okay. Well, here's what I would suggest that we do. It's not fair to you, Mike, to throw you in the in the middle of the fray like this. Mike Ray in the fray. Let, <laughs> let's go through these these hellos and then introduce Mike and then let him tell his story, Bob. Why don't we do that? We have more hellos? Well, we got a lot more hellos here. We got <laughs> Greg, sorry about COVID. Jim Roy, Jim I got my tickets for the Boston show from Bob. But you still got a shirt, and there is my shirt. There is right, my. We got we got silver moose restoration shirts. Now there here again, Jim Roy. You ought to have these in the workshop. Jim is one of the premier restoration yep. companies for airstreams and vintage trailers in the country, yep. and he should be putting these on all the restorations. Although I don't know, if it doesn't count as original equipment. But silver moose restorations is up in. Monmouth, Maine. He's got two feet of snow on the ground, and he expects two more this weekend. What a cool shirt. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I thank Jim for it. The only size, this is a large. And unfortunately, I can't fit into a large anymore, so my wife will be wearing it. <laughs> I used to be able to fit into a large. Now we're into the XL territory. Now. Okay, wait. Gail's got a, Gail's got a question. Due to the length of the product, would it, will it fit under a double 30-pound cover on the front of the rig? Do you want me to hit these now, or yeah, is that okay? Yeah, yeah we'll just, we'll just come on. Then, then, then we'll answer this one. Then we're going to let you talk about the company. and, and the No, product. not a problem. Then anyway, we'll go back to ground zero. Yeah, no problem. Hi, Gail. Um, to your question, will it fit underneath the cover? Um, and I assume that would be on a towable. It's got two 30 pound uh, tanks and you've got a cover obviously going over it. So when you do actually add basically it's two and three quarter inches onto that service valve, I think where you're going is absolutely right. The pigtail is coming straight out and there's a real good chance that it hits the inside of that cover and makes it pretty difficult to get to, which is why we actually, there's two ways to attack that. One is that what folks were doing for the first year or so of introduction of gas stop, is they really reorient their service valves to the corners, which obviously creates much more clearance and they're able to go ahead and fit them underneath the cover. That was one approach. But we had a lot of folks just like you saying, hey, you know, I'm not excited about doing that over time, figure something out. So we challenged, this is a gas stop as a Dutch based company and we challenged the uh, European engineers with this. And in working actually with some customers here in the US, uh, we came up with a solution of what's called a 90 degree pigtail. So what that basically is, it's branded as a gas gear product and it's got a piece of brass that basically redirects the flow in a 90 degree fashion right off the connection. So. Basically, gas stop, 90 degree, comes straight down and has a gentle fold to the regulator, avoiding the whole issue um, with the cover. With the added benefit, anybody that's uh, traveled with pigtails for a long time knows that you got a lot of stress in those connections. Cracks, connect, you know, right where that connection got leaks a lot of times over the years. This uh, actually solved it somewhat unintentionally, but it actually solved uh, that type of issue for the pigtails. So to your question, gas stop can fit underneath the cover in either one of those two ways, but with a 90 degree, you have a much easier, much better solution. Okay. Good point. So Mike, why don't you start all over again and tell us what the product is, what it's designed for, <laughs> and the fact that it has home use as well as an RV use. Sure. Uh, again, Guys, thanks so much for letting me uh, jump into the ring with you guys. So I'm really uh, was looking forward to it. I've seen a few of these shows. So, And I'm going to try to make this intro really short because I really like the idea of how interactive this is so we can chat through a lot of this with folks that are out there. Um, bottom line, again, my name is Mike Ray. Um, I am with DPS. Uh, I am one of the owners of it. 
uh, and DPS has been in the safety business for over 25 years. For most of its life, uh, was providing electrical surge protection for both utilities and for cable companies for a lot of their commercial outside plant. So we continue to do that, but we heard about Gas Stop and just felt it was an amazing product. We were introduced to it by, again, the Europeans. Um, uh, Gas Stop is a Dutch based company, they've been in business for tens of years in Europe. And they're over uh, across 12 countries. And uh, when we looked at that product and we actually looked at the US RV industry, we saw there was an absolute need there for a product that would shut down the flow of propane 100%. Again, we come from the safety side and we recognize a product that actually meets a need. So uh, me personally, um, I've been with DPS now for about seven years. Uh, before that was in retail, um, all over the world, actually. Uh, proud father of a couple of young ladies are in college right now. And uh, so we're, my wife and I now are empty nesters in, uh, near the beaches here in near Clearwater, Florida. So uh, Gas Stop does three things really, really well. One, it shuts off the flow again if you have an extraordinary venting of gas, so a major leak. It'll shut it down right at the tank, either in a fixed tank, an ASME tank, like a class A or class C, or a fifth wheel trailer, those DOT bottles that fix right there. It'll shut it down there at the tanks. The other thing it does, and more and more folks love it, you don't really use a gas stop for that shut off because think of, a, um, think of an airbag. You don't use an airbag and hopefully you'll never see an airbag but you're just really happy to have it there because you just never know. And so gas stop just sits on those tanks and watches and helps um, keep you safe that way. The, how you actually can use a gas stop is the chances of a minor leak. Again, if it's, if it's under a major leak, it won't shut it off because of things you're operating, you know, your unit. But right now, how do you find out if you have a minor leak anywhere in the system? Well, gas stop gives you the ability to actually create a pressure test of your entire network, both the high pressure, your regulator, and the low pressure network in about a two to five minute process. So that's the second thing it does for people. Um, we got a story at this last show. Somebody was walking by us and they said, Bob saw our place and somebody came walking by yelling, I love gas stop. We like it too, but we were wondering, okay, what was the passion from? This, uh, this couple were sitting out at a, at a fire, gathered around a bunch of RVs, and they started smelling propane, which creates real excitement for everybody around the fire. And so everybody's running off, you know, basically smelling around their RVs, looking for a leak, and it's at night. So these folks went back. They had a gas stop. So they actually, had two, it was a fifth wheel. Went back, basically did their quick minor leak check on their systems immediately found out it wasn't them and the peace of mind that came back for that to them and they went back to the group and helped and they did finally identify it um it's that type of thing you get from a minor leak um, uh, capability and the Mike, other thing it does i'm sorry go ahead well what you're saying here is again it's one of those products that you hope you never have to use but just like ryan said it it he installed one and it gave the customer a sense of security and safety. It it kind of is like a like a security blanket. Um, again, you don't want to use a burglar alarm, but you want to have one. You don't want it to go off, but you want to have one. Am I making the proper analogy? I think you absolutely are. I think if you look at gas stop is just one of the things you should have to just really have a great experience to stay safe out there. You got, you know, at one time having search protectors on your electrical system wasn't like the thing, as you guys know. And as time went along, more electronics showed up on RVs. That, and you started looking at, you know, campground power and some, you know, not incredibly clean. Um, and, you know, you have the voltage sags, you have polarity issues. People really got their heads. I need that device to keep that, that subsystem clean, make sure I don't lose my TVs. I'm into a three week vacation and week one, I blow up a lot of my electronics. You know, you need a surge protector. 
tire pressure monitoring. You got that whole thing covered, right? Make sure that you're really on top of it. Um, and if you look at your propane subsystem, this now it gives you the opportunity to get that peace of mind around that. So again, the three things it does makes major leak. It's that airbag shuts it off for you. Hopefully you never have to use it. Number two, minor leak gives you that peace of mind of knowing that I've got full integrity of my system. And the third thing, which I think Bob alluded to is that you just don't run out of propane because you have a gauge. And with a five year warranty on these devices, you just have a high quality gauge. It's a pressure gauge, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it just allows you to make sure that you can glance in there. You know, you don't run out. Lots of stories, people walking up to us going, you know, my furnace sort of went off in the middle of the night, wasn't happy about it. Um, and we keep forgetting to bring up the gauge itself for that because of the safety consideration. So all Bob, three can you show that? Can you show that gauge again? Let me, let me, and I, let me, I think, Mike, it's also safe to say that the reliability of the gauges that come with the units is not necessarily something you'd want to uh, trust totally. I think uh, you're absolutely right. I think it depends. Obviously, you got a big class A with a float type gauge. You know, um, the chances of that being pretty good are high, right? It's, it's not bad they also a lot of those big tanks you've got a backup gauge um and gas stop really is a nice backup to that uh i think more to your point john and some other units some of the things that might show up uh aren't great and i think gas stop really gives you that ability to just be a little bit tighter i mean it's right at the source yeah let me let me show a little video if i don't get my rear end kicked here but hang hang on here let me, boom, boom. Mike, don't get your hopes up. This usually doesn't work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. When planning an activity outdoors, there are always a few key items you will need. Whether you're organizing a barbecue with friends and family, planning a camping or caravanning excursion, or preparing for a boat trip. Safe, practical, and easy to use are important features for any product you decide to use. That's why we've developed Gas Stop. This incredible safety device will instantly and automatically shut off the flow of gas from your gas bottle in the event of a major leak. Also, the useful gauge indicates when your gas is low, meaning no more unnecessary refills and no more running out of gas without warning. Simply screw, tighten and tap several times to install the Gas Stop and you're ready to go. Plan ahead, always pack a Gas Stop. Gas stop, the ultimate in gas safety. And as you can tell, it's a European video uh, with the neat languages on the on the deal. But uh, John, you asked earlier as far as the home versus RV. Uh, in the United States, we focus really on the RVs. And when we work with the uh, Europeans in terms of design and its actual specs, uh, what we try to do is just get as close. If you stack the appliance uh, specs on the average US RV and you basically pull them all together, we want to make sure we're just slightly above that aggregate, that total. And that's why we're focused really on the RV segment, right? And um, that basically means we really haven't attacked the barbecue side. Um, we have, are just coming out with a barbecue version. That's really more tuned for barbecues. So what we're talking about today is really an RV uh, version. Mm -hmm. Well, and down the line and next year we'll be having a barbecue version as well. Now I thought Mike, that was very interesting that, that video that you just showed, it, it showed the person, um, putting it into a backpack and taking it with him. Um, right. can I presume that that's also good that if you're at a campfire, and you're eating beans, take the gas stop with you, and that would detect anything before it became an issue for the rest of the crowd? Um, yes, that'd be awesome. However, I'm not sure we can guarantee that that dial would work correctly for you. But <laughs> You'd have to sit in the right kind of chair to install it, right? A painful chair, but it would be a, a chair nevertheless. Chair. Yes. Okay. All right, now, now, Ryan spoke earlier about installing this system. So how... And Ryan's a very good independent rep. Uh, do you see a lot of our dealers 
picking up these products for after sale? Yes, we've got we've got about uh, 13 dealers around the U.S. right now, most national dealers uh, online and offline. So uh, you'll see them at General RV, Lazy Days, et cetera. Um, those folks are doing the installs and it really and Ryan, you know, could, you know, hopefully doesn't have his eyes closed, but he can install those very easily. He gets it. And on the consumer side, most consumers that are that are really comfortable working on their RV and are, are practiced with it and have worked with their propane systems can install these. Um, now there's two different types, as we tell for the DOT tanks, um, for your trailer trailers and fifth wheels, you've got that Acme, which is super easy to install. It just goes right on the tank and your pigtail goes right behind it. This one you just pushed up is the POL version. Uh, perfect. So that one actually goes on your class A and class C's, those big ASME fixed tanks. It goes right there at that front valve. It does require moving the regulator over a couple inches because you have to make room to put that device right there at the front. Ryan would know that and because he's seen it. And um, so you're moving the regulator to the right a bit. So again, it just depends on how comfortable folks are in, in working in installation in those places. Mm. You know what you should do, um, Mike, at some time, uh, if it's convenient, send one send one up to me and I'll have Ryan install it. And then we'll just do a little video about um, not the install, but, you know, when you actually see it. No do, the, no, do the install for Ryan and then he can send it out to people. So involve Ryan in the uh, install. Yeah. And show you don't want me can... doing any install. <laughs> no. You would fall in the loud hour. boom. I, I want to take about a five minute break. Mike, I'm going to drop you back down for a minute and we're going to talk a little bit about our fans opportunity to win a very unique travel trailer. Bob, before that, I'm going to put Mike on the spot here and say, okay. Mike, can we give away a unit tonight? You can give, how about we give, uh, let's make it this way. Two Acme for one, folks, because so, they put one on each bottle, right? For a trailer, fifth wheel, and one POL. So give you a couple of chances. Okay. So now basically we've given Zagami something to do during this five-minute video. No, I've got to produce the vi I got to produce the five-minute commercial and stuff. You know, I actually see I do twice the work. John's just a pretty face on the camera. I'm a pretty face on the camera, but I have to produce the show while I'm doing that. Yeah. That's why, that's why they say it's Bob's show. But, 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 Mike, the thing you don't understand is when we do the Camper Report show, Sugami is just, well, I wouldn't call him a pretty face. He's a face. But I do all the work on the production end of it. So between the two of us, we get it done. And so this is a combination of six, seven and a half, eight years we've been doing this stuff. Um, well, John, you got to understand. I I got a little empathy for uh, Bob because we both share that nice little spot on the top. That's of right, that shiny yeah. spot in the hill. Right. <laughs> you know what Ronald Reagan said? That shiny spot on the hill. We're it. <laughs> well, thanks. I know you got to go, and uh, I'll be here waiting for you. All right, and drop it down. We'll come right back to you soon. Hang on. All right, so folks, we've got something exciting for you tonight. Uh, I was with Girl Camper, Janine Pettit, both at the Boston show, at the Tampa show this week. And they are, quite honestly, they are running behind a little bit on ticket sales for their fourth annual Camper Girl sweepstakes. And what you can win if you buy the tickets is a beautiful Keystone Springfield, 17 Springdale, 1750 RD, but it has been renovated by the flipping nomad, Courtney Armstrong, and that's going to be the top prize. So you can buy tickets, but John. Hold on. Go back. Go back. Take that Ooh. off for a second. Okay. That I just need to clarify something that Bob referred. No, 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 not that picture. Bob Which referred one? to the flipping nomad, Courtney. That's her actual name on TV. This is Bob. It is not Bob disparaging her work. She calls herself the flipping. Reason being is. That, that is, that's her website. Flipping right. 
Nomad.com. She renovates. Because she flips RVs from bland to fabulous. And I have seen her work. We've had her on another show. And her work is absolutely fabulous. So, ladies and gentlemen, even if you've never heard of her, I have no idea what the interior of that looks like. But if Courtney has had something to do with it, it is going to look spectacular. Okay, so here's the deal. You go to girlcamper.com and buy the tickets. The drawing ends on February 14th, but the winners are not announced to the 17th to allow for any mail-in entries. So we'd like to see you spend 50 bucks for seven entries or $100 for 150 entries, but you can go down to 10 entries, 10 tickets for $10. And the beauty of this contest is if you don't win the trailer, you don't lose out because in addition to the trailer, you can win an $800 credit on Outdoorsy. You can win, oops, where are we here? A portable Go Power solar pack. You can win an airlift suspension kit. Campco is donating one of their portable refrigerator freezers. They're giving away a $1,000 Buzz Charter F electric bike, F being for folding. Those are all the sub prizes beyond the actual trailer itself. And Courtney wow. has done, oh, I forgot one more. Lippert has got a $500 gift certificate for any of their components in their new lifestyle connection of products. Right. And- uh Nobody calls them sub prizes. They are additional prizes. Additional prizes. Okay. Sub prizes, you know, that and just doesn't have any class to it. All of the profits, the proceeds of the raffle go to the Hold You Foundation, which helps families with children with cancer and other ailments, but they don't pay the medical bills. What they do is they'll pay you rent. They'll pay the expenses to get back and forth to the hospital, they'll pay your groceries, and Janine has sponsored this foundation for four years. So with that said, I'm going to try for a double header tonight and see if we can't have Janine tell you in her own words. Hi, friends. This is Janine Pettit, founder of Girl Camper and editor-in-chief of Girl Camper Magazine. I am here in Elkhart, Indiana at the RV Museum Hall of Fame, and I am showing off the Springdale. We are giving this RV away in our annual Girl Camper Sweepstakes for charity. The Whole Jew Foundation is benefiting once again, and our friends at Keystone have partnered with us to bring you one of my favorite models. It's a Springdale this year from our friends at Keystone. This place is absolutely beautiful. Our dear friend Courtney Armstrong from the Flippin' Nomad did an exquisite job taking this from factory to fabulous. If you would like to buy a ticket, head over to girlcamper.com. It is so easy to purchase. A little pop-up will come and you won't have to be searching around for it. $10 will get you 10 tickets. But if you want to spend $100, you'll get 150 tickets. If you share it, they'll give you one free ticket. We also have some extra prizes happening this year. Our friends at Campco are donating their great new outdoor refrigerator. Outdoors, he's got an $800 gift card. Lippert has a $500 gift card to get you some nice chairs and stuff. Go Power is uh, providing us with a portable solar system so you could hook it up up front there. We also have an airlift suspension system. And lastly, Buzz eBikes is donated a $1,000 folding eBike. I had the fun of trying that out last weekend. Thing folds down like this, weighs 35 pounds, goes in the back of your truck and goes 40 miles an hour. It was so much fun. So if you don't win the RV, you have all kinds of chance at other prizes. The drawing is going to be February 17th. Now the raffle ends on February 14th, like did that show? No. It didn't show? We heard it, but we didn't see it. Well, let me try that again. I wonder what I did wrong there. Oh, I just killed it. Okay, so you heard it. Okay, so we're not going to play it again because I don't want to cut into 
more of Mike's time, but we'll post the uh, website. It's girlcamper.com. And uh, I'll also post the link for that video so that you can watch it there. So let's get Mike back up here. Well, Bob, you can, why don't you just type in girlcamper.com. So when people are listening to the second half of the show, they'll still be able to, to um, head over there. I mean, those are some great prizes. Those are some great prizes. Again, it's a national, it's a national contest. Okay. So I just put it up there. So nope. you'll have that. All right, let's bring Mike back up and uh, Not there. Commence, commence the conversation. All right. Uh, any Anybody post anything while I was doing that, John? Yes, Don and Pat Hawes. Um, in, I think they're in Texas. They said late again. Hey, guys. And uh, now Ryan said the customer supplied it, the one he installed, but I'm not sure where he got it. But I would like to offer these to my customers. Now, Mike, again, this is kind of like, uh, like a, a smoke alarm. You don't want it to go off, but you want to have it, right? Correct. And R Ryan can um, probably install a lot of these just by offering it. And um, again, he's doing a great job. Cold weather propane use. Any issues with freeze-ups? I've seen regulators freeze and, of course, dump all the propane <coughs> into the air off the regulator after the regulator breaks. I want to give Walter props for that question, too. So the reality is, as you guys know, when propane gets super cold uh, in sub-zero temperatures, it starts behaving strangely. So the way gas stop works it's like a check valve, uh, and that's why they've patented it, because it's got very, very uh, proprietary tech on it. But the bottom line is it works on differential uh, pressures. So if you're venting very quickly and you have the tank pressure constant, it's going to close this thing. Now, if you're in sub-zero temperatures, what ends up happening is the behavior of the propane is very different. So the actual trigger... Remember, I started. I was talking about the seventy-five to one hundred thousand BTUs of demand. That trigger starts to drop. The colder it is, I did get a call from a gentleman that was uh, he was uh, trying to figure out what was going on because he's in the uh, mountains of Sierra Nevadas, and he had he was ne negative twenty with wind chill factors beyond that, and his gas stop shut off on him. So there is a chance if it is very, very, very cold that, uh, again, gas stop will protect you, but that trigger will actually drop. Go ahead. That's just Bob trying to figure out what he Younger did wrong. Younger Pearl Camper is editor-in-chief of... Hey, stop that. She sounds nicer than me, though, too, though. <laughs> she, she's been doing it a lot longer than us, too. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you've just joined us, we're talking with Mike Ray from... DEF, which stands for Diversified Power Solutions, and they have come up with a very unique safety device called Gas Stop. And uh, if you have any questions and you're watching live, Gilles, just Gilles, type Gilles it in over to the right, and uh, we'll question. be able to answer your questions. Gilles got right a question. We would be interested in participating in the trial of the 90-degree gas stop, but that's not trial anymore, right? That's coming to market, right, Mike? Yeah, it's in the market. You can find it, uh, e-trailer, Techno RV, a uh, lot of folks, if you look. Uh, and the place to find all that, and Gail, I'd be more than happy to work with her. Um, and uh, I don't know if we can get the email over to uh, to those folks. I will, and, I will get, I'll get her email to you. How's that? Lovely. And that way we'll it's get that. Florida, Gail, we'll get to you. And uh, we love. Yeah, how long are you in Florida? Let us know. Just type in over there. I'm in Florida until so and so. And tell us where you're located there because we're, we don't know if we're in East Florida. Coast, are you, Gail? Yeah. East Coast or West Coast. But, um, you know, this is one of those devices that why wouldn't you have it is really what it all boils down to. You hear, you hear so many horror stories with propane. And, you know, many times propane is one of those out of sight, out of mind because they're tucked away. And depending upon where they're located, they can have, you know, it, they can make it. I mean, it's a lot easier on a, on a travel trailer to access your propane than it is generally on a uh, class A or class C. Yeah. But, you know, when you think of, you know, the thing that I like about this is there's never been anything like it in the RV industry. So the consumers will gravitate to it because they can see the potential. 
I think the dealers have to gravitate to it because just think every unit that goes into an RV dealership for service, any kind of service, the service writer says, while you're here, Mr. DePetro, can I show you something that we'd like to install on your unit today? X, Y, Z, it's X number of dollars. 99% of the time, the RVer is going to say yes, because they trust that person to be looking out for their best interest. Am I wrong in that thinking, Mike? Not at all. In fact, uh, that has been the successful strategy of our uh, dealers that are actually presenting the product. Uh, it is the only device in the U.S. that cuts it off 100%. So the conversation with the customer, uh, both at service event as well as when they're delivering a new coach, right, and they're doing the walk around, and they present this as just part of the overarching safety program, right? Here's a surge protector, here's this. This is the propane solution. There is no other one that does this. So, so we found it the most successful strategy. So it could be a, a gift at closing or the walkthrough. What is the list price of the unit, Mike? Uh, as you look online and if you just type gas stop and uh, you'll look online you'll see the average price is 79.99 so we try to keep this as reasonable as possible if you compare it to a lot of the other safety gear out there and you compare it to a lot of things that people spend money on and you look at it as a five-year warranty so you're guaranteed at least performance that yep um it's an incredibly effective solution for folks so that really hitting them in the wallet too hard yeah and, you know, I'm thinking one thing here, if, if Walter does his um, Good Sam event on Memorial Day weekend, as they have, again, depending upon what's happening this year, but yeah. this might be an event that, um, and again, I'm thinking out loud here, Walter, work something out with Ryan and have Ryan come up to the event. And on one of the days, um, you know, you guys make these products available to your attendees. Uh, very similar to if you go to a to a uh, you know an alliance convention or a Newmar convention or whatever, there's always somebody there from the factory that's doing repairs. Well, maybe Ryan wants to uh, again. You guys work that out, but it's another way. Um, you know, you put a little markup in it, and the association makes some money. Ryan makes some money. I get an override on everything, so I'm. Happy. <laughs> uh, but at least we go into that way. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to. Um... I don't want to really run past the gas gear as you're chatting about that as far as opportunities. This is where the dealers are also finding because those pigtails are a point of failure, as you guys know, in the RV business. It's been that way for a long time. And the solutions aren't really just trying to make it better and better. It's, this is a radical change. That's why they patented. Both, both of these designs are patented. Um, so having that and eliminating the stress at the connection point, again, for trailers and fifth wheels, but they use pigtails. Folks are Does just- Bob have a, do, did you provide Bob with a, a graphic of that, that we can put that up while you're talking? It um, is in that, uh, in that site. What am I look? What am I looking for? At the like, bottom of that site. No, I've, I, I pulled this, the pictures off. You talk about this? Nope, it's actually a pigtail, 90 degree. Um, oh, no, I don't think I pulled the, uh, I didn't pull the 90 degree. I'm sorry. No, nope. no worries. Yeah. Um, more than happy to provide that to you. Whenever that's, that's the commercial package on the, the actual gas stop device. Right. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, one sure. second. Hold on. Uh -huh. In the meantime, in the meantime, what do we got for comments? Well, Walter says, I would love to have Ryan come and offer his <laughs> services and products on Memorial Day weekend. Okay. I didn't realize I had show and tell, so I'm going to work this. Hey, I'm Mike, sorry. Mike, Mike to the rescue. Not that professional, but I'm going to take a shot. So uh, bottom line, it looks like this. We, we have two versions. One's, as you can imagine, the rubber. I'm working cameras. Um, and you can see where that connection, normally you would have the pigtail coming out. Yep. And again, the stress is right at this place. You've eliminated totally that stress point. Big honking piece of brass here that really just takes care of it. Um, one thing we've done is they upgraded all the materials and 
what uh, Gastop is offering for these braided. It's a two-year warranty on a pigtail, right? And on the rubber ones, it's a one-year. Nobody gives those kinds of warranties on pigtails. So um, as you can tell, it's a pretty cool device. It absolutely, sorry if I'm just waving it at you. Um, it really makes a difference. And again, as we had that question, you can see where this basically takes the, the fit into uh, the trailer and just makes sense. Comes off the desktop, goes straight down the side. Well, especially the to Gail's question earlier, inside yep. the tanks. Yep. The so Gail can see how exactly that, you know, literally works. So this also works if I got a fifth wheel. Most fifth wheels have a port and starboard, you know, 30 pound tanks, you know, in the individual compartments. Yep. Some have that uh, side by side pair, you know, in one compartment that you open up the big door with the service valves facing out. So having these enables that door to close again, if that makes sense. So for, um, and it also, the pricing on these things. Uh, we intentionally made them very comparable to what a regular pigtail, a braided pigtail, but the regular one, um, so that really it's a replacement strategy as well as fitting a gas stop, if you will. Hey, Mike, um, so we can figure something out here. Um, the time to install that, what, what would be with, a, with an installer who knows what, what they're doing? Um, Give me some this time. Thing, yes, sir. It's the same amount of time it would take for regular pigtail. It just goes, uh, I clock it less than three minutes, right? Okay. And that's that's it's consumer good. installable though, right? I'm sorry? Is that the consumer, the, the, the RV? The consumer or, or frankly, any tech, anybody. It's really the same mechanism, just taking off the pigtail that was there. Um, I apologize. I'm actually going to, that's incorrect. Because adding it to the tank is uh, is absolutely super easy within a few minutes. You have the regulator you're actually attaching to the port. It's a quarter inch uh, compression fitting. And um, so it would go there. Uh, there are also adapters to have it go to. I'm saying uh, for the techs in the room um, so that it actually fits on your uh, MPT type regulator port. So there, there's actual adapters that have that go into those. So it'd be probably, it just depends on where your consumer is versus your uh, your tech. Your tech will get the regulator. Okay. Uh, I, I, only, I only bring that up because, you know, I brought up the idea of saying, hey, set, send Ryan to the Good Sam thing um, as to how long it takes, how many you could, you could schedule in a day, um, that type of thing. But we can we can go over that later. So you got, got an endorsement from Walter, and Walter's tough to sell. He's he's an engineer. He he likes he likes this when we put this uh, stuff up there. And Maria is joining us, first time on. This is so interesting and important. Maria, oh, Maria, Maria oh, wait, 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 wait. She was talking to me. <laughs> was talking. She addressed. Look at it. He's looking right this, at me. Or to the Greek guy. So <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> we would Maria, this, you we meant that to me, six. right? DePietro, what? we've been doing this for six years, and Maria is just discovering us. She's discovered me, not we you. Have to, we have to up our game. Maria, where are you from? Oh, we, wait are delighted, we are delighted to have you here, Maria. Yeah. Okay. Where's Maria from? She says, next safety issue, fridge fires, will it shut it down? Um, we see uh, that that's another good question, Walter. Thank you. It will only shut down again. It works off a of differential and pressure. So you have to be venting a lot of propane for it to shut down automatically. However, and this is what we've seen now we've been at this a few years. So the stories are starting to show up is you should actually, and I know there are products out there that are the automatic, mm -hmm. the, the automatic extinguisher in the back of the, uh, refrigerator uh, this will not stop a fire it just stops fires from getting worse by putting propane into them if the propane fire starts again we've already had stories where it's melted off a propane line and then at that point you're venting a bunch of propane into a fire gas stop shuts it off right there it uh, probably would not extinguish your fire 
but it just doesn't make it tons worse. If that makes sense, Walter. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Walter. Maria is from Wells, Maine. Wells, Maine. Okay. Like near you, Zagami. I'm in old I'm in Old Orchard Beach from May 1st to November 1st, Maria. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, Maria, and I joke about the six years. How did you find the program tonight? What what brought you to the program tonight? Okay. Now, while we're asking that question, um, Ryan had a question. Mike, do you let do you let your do-it-yourself people know to use either gas tape or paste on the regular side? I have no uh, idea we that do means. if they're using that, uh, as he knows, with the compression fitting, you're okay. But, and it's, it's always advisable, but when you're putting the MPT, he's absolutely right that you need that yellow, uh, you know, tape, both on the Teflon tape, both on both connections, both threaded connections. So mm -hmm. he's absolutely right. Yeah. And, and Bob, why don't you read Dawn, uh, Bob and Dawn, Dawn and Pat Hawes comment. Who? Hawes. There we go. Now this is not set up, right, Mike? Hi, Don. No, not at all. But nice Either. to meet Don. Actual oh, endorsements. Wow. Yeah. That's and great. I don't know, Ryan, what do you mean by high limit switch? Do you know what that means, Mike? I'm sorry. Ryan Which added one? high limit switch. Do we know? Uh, no. Okay. Ryan, explain that. Maria said she saw a great YouTube video of you, John, and was very impressed. She subscribed on Facebook and got email notice for tonight's show. So well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can track it back to <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna have to buy him another hat size. I saw a great YouTube video of you. Oh, you guys, okay. Of you, John. Oh, mine says you, John. No, no, no. Of you guys subscribed on Facebook and got email notice for tonight's show. Well, that's fantastic. We appreciate it. Yeah. Maria looks like um Marie Osmond there, doesn't she, in that picture? Yeah. Um I don't know what's the other one? Maria Stefanis, no. Um, Channel yeah. 5 News in Boston. Yeah. Maria Stefanis, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Another Greek. Another Greek. We <laughs> love the Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> Channel, 5, Channel 5 News in Boston. She's been on the air for probably 20 years, right, John? Yeah. yeah. Well, it is awesome. If I could throw in something real quick, because Don and Pat have it. One thing that uh, we're working to communicate better, I think a lot of people have completely got the idea that they need that airbag. They need that in case of a major league, but we're finding more and more that people love that minor league check. And I'm not sure a lot of folks that are buying the, ga the gas stops, like in this recent show, we were talking to a ton. They're very happy with the gas stops, but we we're finding too many times that we somehow didn't get across. It can do this minor league check. So again, I just want to encourage you guys that, uh, what folks are doing, they're on tens of thousands of RVs now. We're getting a lot of input. They're really using that as part of their camp setup strategy. So either your mental or written down checklist, you know, you're checking your surge, you're putting your surge protector in for the electrical system. On the propane, run that minor leak check. You've probably been bouncing around for seven, eight hours. As you're setting up camp, this thing only takes two to five minutes. You can, you can sleep at night knowing you just tested the system. It is absolute, has a full integrity. There's nothing uh, that sprung a leak anywhere in your journey. Um, and again, the chances are not, we don't want to overemphasize that things are going to happen over and over. But again, it is peace of mind that this now gives you that ability that every time, say you pulled it out of storage after five months, before you leave home, you check your electrical system, you check your tire pressure, Check your propane system. Make sure you got uh, full integrity. I just had to throw in that little uh, system because we did find a number of folks that spent the money. They had the device, but just this is just additional functionality. Yeah, that's good information. Yeah. So, folks, we want you to look for it first at your nerd the dealer, and if they don't stock it, tell them they should stock it so that it's in the parts and accessory store. It is available online. It's available a lot of other places. And if you have inquiries, I think, 
I have the U.S. Boo, boo, boo. This, tell them what this website is, Mike. I think you've got uh, two options, and if we can put both of them up, this is the um, – actually, you can send that. That's the email if you have any questions. That goes direct to us, and we'd be more than happy to help out with anything. We've downloaded you with a lot of things, or and probably I've done a relative poor job. I would love for you – if you got a minute, go on Gas Stop USA. Thanks a ton, Bob. That's exactly just Gas Stop USA. It you sure looks like Gestapo. It, it's Gestapo.com. <laughs> or I get in trouble. Gas <laughs> Stop <laughs> USA. Yeah, uh, That's the Italian coming out of my <laughs> and, the, and the Greek gets in front of the Italian and try to make sure we don't go out. So <laughs> but if you would, um, you'll find a number of things in there. Again, what we described, but also we've been just blessed with partnership with around uh, a tons of full-time RVers because we use them as sort of our sounding boards on new products and how this works. You'll see a ton of reviews in there. You'll see it under uh, uh, a review section. And all those videos are there where they've literally scared the hell out of us by snipping live propane lines. We do not recommend that where they've proved that this thing works. Um, you mean the RV, changing lanes, um, Morton's on the move, wandering weekends, bizarre, but you'll find people with blow torches figuring it out. They've tried all sorts of different ways to prove it out. Super innovative, amazing people. You'll see those in there. Mike, um, how, how many units, how many units you think are in the U S right now? Uh, we know we've got them on tens of thousands of RVs right now. Okay. So and folks, if they're on tens of thousands of RVs and you haven't seen them profiled on 60 Minutes or uh, any of those shows, you know that it's relatively safe and you are not the test pilot on these, right, Mike? Uh, you are not. That's why I'm encouraging you check out the video so you can see that other people were those test pilots. And these are full-time RVers that sleep in these things and they wanted that safety. And uh, for those that are looking, follow Bob's advice, obviously, look at that local dealer uh, but on the Gas Stop USA site, you'll see a buy, and you got tons of retailers in there that you can just click the button and get to. And you know what? We said we were going to give away, but why don't, why don't, when we go off the air, Bob can pick two people. And um, what, know, what are we get? What are we giving away, Mike? Uh, three devices. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. And so, then, uh, so actually, it just depends on what people have. Okay. You know, so if they got a class A. So well, can, okay, so they can they can take the choice of the inline system or the uh, absolutely the barbecue yeah. the, the tank tank. So why don't we do this? Make it four, so then it's easy. All okay. right, and they can do that. And then let's do uh, let's do a couple of uh, how about four of the ninety degree hoses as well. And okay. what we'll do is do the premium thing, the braided stainless. And so probably be two pairs, right? So oh, one for each. Well, right, you'd have you'd to have, have one in each tank. tank. It'll be right. inside the inside the tank thing. So yeah, they probably have two. So yeah, so we'll do yeah, we'll do four of the ninety degrees, but two for one and two for another, and then we'll give four where they have their choice of things. And ladies and gentlemen, let let's be perfectly clear on this giveaway. If it was not for me bringing it up, it would not be happening. So if you win, I expect at least a Duncan gift card or. Is this the Italian coming out? Cash. Oh, no, no, this, no. Is, this is Sicilian. It's Sicilian. It's Sicilian. It's Sicilian. I if, got if you win, John would really like to have another can of Chef Boyardee. Yeah, I love love See, he's, he's, he says he's Italian, Mike, but he eats uh, Chef Boyardee. So, cool. so Mike, can, John, can you tell how many comments we've had? Um, no, I can't tell here. I, I don't have the numbers. Well, okay. wait a minute. No, hold on. Hold on. Uh, no? no, I don't think I can get it because I'm okay, not so, the... Um, all right, so I'm going to go the 10th comment, the 20th comment, 30th, and the 40th because those would be the people that were in. The 50th will get a set of two and the 60th will get a set of two. We know we'll have that. All right? So, Mike, Mike thank you very much. Yeah, I told so you, this, this thing... This thing flies by. We don't know what the hell we're going to say. Oh, my God. This has been a blast. Like oh, I said, yeah. it was like being in the ring with you two guys. So it's <laughs> hey, been fun. RVing is fun, Mike. 
that, I got to tell you, we just spent five, six days. And again, Bob was there talking to, I come from the boating side as well. These communities are just, the people are great. You just love talking to them. They've, they've made choice on this lifestyle. And we get to hear these stories just blow us away. So thanks again for letting us connect with them again. All right. You're hang, a great guest, Mike. And hang on, everybody. I am going to try Janine's video one more time. Mike, I'm going to drop you. Do you trust him? Huh? <laughs> every, every once in a while, I get this stuff right. And then I'll come back on as a share screen. Estelle says these will definitely be put on my RV before the summer. And Hawes, I thought you were my friend. Great show again tonight, Bob. Bob okay. I am here in Elkhart, Indiana, at the RV Museum. It was working. And I am showing off. The Springdale. We are giving this RV away in our annual Girl Camper Sweepstakes for charity. The Whole Jew Foundation is benefiting once again, and our friends at Keystone have partnered with us to bring you one of my favorite models. It's a Springdale this year from our friends at Keystone. This place is absolutely beautiful. Our dear friend, Courtney Armstrong from the Flippin' Nomad did an exquisite job taking this from factory to fabulous. If you would like to buy a ticket, head over to girlcamper.com. It is so easy to purchase. A little pop-up will come and you won't have to be searching around for it. $10 will get you 10 tickets. But if you want to spend $100, you'll get 150 tickets. If you share it, they'll give you one free ticket. We also have some extra prizes happening this year. Our friends at Campo are donating their great new outdoor refrigerator. Outdoorsy's got an $800 gift card. Lippert has a $500 gift card to get you some nice chairs and stuff. Go Power is uh, providing us with a portable solar system so you could hook it up up front there. We also have an airlift suspension system. And lastly, Buzz eBikes is donated a $1,000 folding eBike. I had the fun of trying that out last weekend. Thing folds down like this, weighs 35 pounds, goes in the back of your truck and goes 40 miles an hour. It was so much fun. So if you don't win the RV, you have all kinds of chance at other prizes. The drawing is going to be February 17th. Now the raffle ends on February 14th, like always. But our platform that we're using will not be allowed to pull the winning ticket until February 17th because they have to wait and see if anything came in the mail. So it ends on February 14th. The winner will be announced on February 17th. Spread the love and help families in need. This is Janine Pettit for Girl Camper Keystone and all of our part. Isn't, isn't that crazy? Have you met Janine, Mike? I have. I'm so glad you got that video to work. I just forgot how cool she was until yeah. I just saw that again. You know, she's, she's dynamite. We had her up at the Boston show, and she did two seminars on Saturday and two seminars on Sunday. It was like the Pied Piper. Pied Piper. She get up on the. She's stage. got so much energy. Wood, yeah, just, and they, they yeah, come yeah. out from come out from the woodwork. But she had a great show and and doing that well. Hey, I want to thank you again uh, very much for joining us tonight. It's always a pleasure to see you. But this was this was a fun show and. Uh, it was. If I if I can invite, there was so many great questions. Thank you for making that happen. Anybody that really wants to connect, I would love to connect. You put the email up. Um, just put on there, hey, Mike, I want to talk to you. And just we'll make sure that I give you a shout. Just tell me how to find you. Okay. So any further questions, anything else? Uh, nope. Not no, no, that no, one. no. That's not him, is it? No. Nope. No, that's Sokol. No shock. Oh, that's, that's the wrong. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's Mike Sokol. How did I do that's that? That's the problem with having Mike as your name. Everybody's got that one. So I'll I put. I'll, I I will post it up. I probably didn't even. Uh, see Not what a problem. I did. It's under yeah. USA. Yep. All right. USA. So yeah. We'll do that. We're gonna hold on. Walter's got something here. Okay. Go ahead. Walter's got breaking news. I don't know. I think he's typing something else here, Walter. Let's see. Breaking news. Well, we'll see. Oh, wait. Hey. Nor'easter may go out to sea, and Saturday could be sunny now. <laughs> and, it's, and it's still only Wednesday, so they could change twice more before we get to Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, if it's a nice weekend, thank me. If hey, it snows was, and terrible, where was, where was the cell? Was the cell hiding? Over there. 
was Estelle, Estelle, where you been? Did you come in 59 minutes late tonight? But certainly in time to make them make sure that they're going to be on our <laughs> She's not see, see, Mike, we even have associate producer. Walter is our associate producer. He doesn't know it, but we're calling him tonight. I think, oh, Gail, I think Gail is very astute. <laughs> See, Don, you just took a hit. <laughs> Gail, thank you. I can't Don wait to connect with Gail. The weather. I can't wait to connect with Gail. Uh, oh, she's in awesome. Hastings, Mike. She's over on the yeah. East Coast, just yeah. south of St. Augustine. Is Lovely. Hastings way over there? Yeah. Lovely. Hastings, wow. the other coast. All right. We're You're running Tampa, over. So you got to go. I swear, I we're already seven minutes over. I think we could do it for two hours, but after six years, Great. we'll keep it. At an hour. Mike Gray, president and partner at DPS, it's been delightful and we're delighted that you could join us tonight. Any closing comments, John? This has been on. John DePietro's RVing in New England, along oh. with Bob Zagami as my sidekick. We'll see you again next oh, week. No, no, right? we let Mike, oh, we gotta let Mike have the last word. Go ahead, Mike. You know, you know what the you know what the <laughs> last thing that they the, the last thing they remember tonight, you want it to be you? Mike, go ahead. You got the last word before I hit the closing video. Oh, my God. You guys are hilarious. Thank you so much. To get to play with you for at least for a little bit. And thanks for everybody that took the time to hang out with us and hit us a bunch of good questions. And um, I really appreciate the opportunity. Seriously. You guys have Great fun. Great product, Mike. You it get one to Ryan. We'll, we'll, right. we'll get to you by email. And we'll get one to Ryan. Ryan will install it on my motorhome. Yep. We'll follow and, up uh, with all this we'll stuff. show here. it again. All right. We'll show, show the ease of installation. All right, but with see a you profession. Down the road. Thank Have you. Have a good night. See you guys. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.